All right, everyone. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Sorry, I had some Bluetooth issues, but uh, awesome, fantastic. Welcome to Cloud Native Live, where we dive into the code behind Cloud Native. I'm Taylor Dolezal, a senior developer advocate at HashiCorp, where I focus on all things infrastructure, application delivery, and developer experience. Every week, we bring a new set of presenters to showcase how to work with Cloud Native technologies. They will build things, they will break things, and they will answer your questions. Join us Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. This week, we have Jason Morgan here with us to talk about Linkerd 2.11 and walk through the new policy features. Uh, some housekeeping, this is an official live stream of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please don't add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. Basically, please be excellent to one another. Uh, with that, I'm very excited to hand it over to Jason to start today's presentation. Jason. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so I've got a, a little screen share. I want to kind of kick off uh, for those that are watching and just do a very, very brief overview of what is a service mesh and go from there. How's that sound? That sounds perfect. All right, so I've got a little little whiteboard going on here. Uh, so I'm going to show you a, a fictional app that is very close to the actual app that we're going to be working with today. And I want to talk about what it is to install and use a service mesh with it, right? So assume this app is running inside of our Kubernetes cluster. Each one of these components, uh, each one of these components represents a pod, right? So the way the way a service mesh works, and also you, you'll see in the chat, sorry for the dis distraction, but if you look in the chat, there's a couple links coming out. Uh, first is the link to the Linkerd Slack, right? So if you join that and you have questions, you can hit me up directly. There's also a pretty large community of folks that you know understand and like talking about Linkerd, and I would love to have you join us. Um, beyond that, you'll also see a link to our Getting Started Guide, right? So that is, that is what I'm going to start with before I get into policy, and it's this page here. And this tells you everything you need to do to install Linkerd, and you're also you'll also see some of it as I as I go through and do it. But before we install anything, let's talk about how it works. So I have an app. It's got a front end and two back ends, right? The front end communicates with the back ends over some sort of call on the network. Well, when we install Linkerd or any any service mesh, what we do is we install a control plane, which is an interface between you know the platform operators and the the service mesh. Right, so it's got some components that actually run, run our environment. And then what we do is we inject a number of these, these proxies, right? these little load balancers in between your application pods. Right, so we, you know, we use what's called the, the sidecar model in Kubernetes to connect, connect the, uh, the proxies to your application. And then we change the network traffic so that instead of going you know, directly from front end to back end, it goes through the proxy to the proxy on the other side. And that like that addition of proxies allows us to take a lot of things that you might put directly in your application and instead give them over to your platform team to run and manage. Right. So as a as a quick example, imagine your environment, you're highly regulated, and it's important to you that you encrypt the traffic between every every pod inside your Kubernetes cluster. Well, these proxies, among other things, they can handle mutually authenticating the connection. So adding TLS and authenticating each side of the conversation. What we're going to show you today is one, how to do this, where you install and uh, add an application to, to a mesh. We're also going to show you how to use policy to decide whether or not this connection is allowed to happen, right? So we can use policy to say, sorry, you're you're not going to be able to talk to that or from that app to that app, as an example, or you know add policy that, so that we are allowed to do it. And that's the basic picture. So I hope that was helpful. Um, again, check out the links. Join us on Slack. I would be super grateful to hear from you and any feedback that you have. And also check out our getting started guide. So this will this will walk you through it. Uh, one more tip. You'll see there's a, a link to dashboard.sevo.59s. I'm going to do a little bit of the demo on a local cluster, and then I'm going to do the rest live on this active cluster. So you can actually go to this dashboard, see what's happening, and watch me break 
and unbreak the Emoji Photo app uh, right here. So please feel free to hit that up. There's also, uh, this is the app that we're going to break and unbreak later. So this is emojivoto.sevo.59s.io. And I think someone will post that in the chat in a second. So with all that being said, let's install Linkerd. Uh, here I've got, I've got a terminal. On the left-hand side, I'm going to do my actual work. On the right-hand side, you see all the pods that are currently installed and running in the environment. Just so you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not faking anything. And we're going to go... We're going to go five minutes from us starting to us having an active service mesh with an application. So that's my that's my commitment here. So by 2.12 Eastern time. And feel free to interrupt me with questions so that I, I don't hit that deadline. I'm going to start off with Linkerd install. Uh, so I'm going to run the Linkerd install command. It's going to generate a bunch of YAML, and it's going to... Uh, hand it off to it's going to hand it off to the, the Kubernetes API. Uh, Ant, Ant, Antenor, uh, they're great getting started guides actually just on the Kubernetes docs themselves. Uh, and there's a bunch of other resources out there. And there's great videos on YouTube that'll show you how to get going. Uh, I recommend, like, I'm running Docker Desktop. I love it. You can use Kubernetes right there uh, to get going. So here I've installed Linkerd, but we don't know whether or not Linkerd is working yet. So I'm going to use the Linkerd CLI. I could also use, again, I could use Helm or a number of other resources to, to install Linkerd. But in this case, I'm doing the CLI. And I'm going to um, I'm going to run a Linkerd check just to see whether or not my, my Linkerd service mesh is healthy. A lot of text scrolls through with green check marks, which fills me with, uh, with confidence. I also see... You know, status check results are uh, green check mark. So now I'm feeling feeling great about it. So that's Linkerd installed. That's our our core control plane. But we still want to add some more, right? I want to see a dashboard like that that UI. If you go to that link, that's that's in a separate extension. So we're gonna show you how to install that. If I run Linkerd viz install and do that same k apply dash f. And for those that don't know, K is just an alias for kubectl. I can't reliably type it. So I use K all the time. Less is more. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just, it's too many letters, right? Um, so I run the I run the uh, Linkerd viz install. Again, outputs YAML, applies it to the Kubernetes API, and we see something coming up and running. So let's do, once again, a check. But I'm just going to check the viz component because I know Linkerd is healthy. We're at we're at two and a half minutes in right now, so I think we're gonna I think we're gonna make it. But let's see. Let me do let me do one more thing. I'm gonna copy and paste my next command so that I I don't waste time here. Great time for questions if if you have them. But so 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 far I haven't you know I've got just an empty cluster, no application running in it that's worth that's worth talking about, right? But we're going to we're gonna remediate that in just a second. I think one one question I've got for you, Jason, is uh, how are what are some of the different ways in which people can get this onto their cluster? Is is the CLI tool the best way? Helm charts, CRDs, what are what are some uh, happy pathways to get that onto your cluster? Yeah, so the CLI, the the nice thing about Linkerd is the CLI and the Helm charts share the same base templates, and an argument that you can use for one works for the other. So there's like, I'm not going to tell you that the CLI is better than the Helm chart or the Helm chart's better. It, it depends on your flow. We do see it's more common for production users to be using the, the Helm chart rather than the CLI. Also, if, you, if you're interested in doing it with Argo CD or Flux, there's a ton of, um, there's a ton of uh, material out there on running Linkerd with Flux or Linkerd with Argo and more stuff being generated all the time. So happy to happy to share some resources around that if you have questions. Awesome. Let me let me install an application and then I'll show you how to add that to the mesh. Oh, Femi, I feel like Femi Yusuf, we spoke last time also. Uh, so Femi Yusuf is Femi Yusuf is asking, are the proxy pods by themselves or are they running as a container within the application pod? Thank you. Yes, that's second thing, right? So uh, and we'll we'll see that in a lot more depth in a second. Right now, I have the Emoji Voto app, right? And we're going to add that to the mesh, but it's not in the mesh yet. So right now, I'm going to install four individual individual containers where it's one container to a pod. 
But after I after I add my Linkerd annotation and add it to the mesh, right? There's now going to be two containers within these pods, and you'll see that happen right now. So let me let me show you one way to do this. We're going to do k get deploy dash n emoji photo dash o yaml. So I'm grabbing all the deployments in the emoji photo namespace, and I'm just outputting yaml, right? And oops, oops didn't mean to do that. Uh, then I want to I want to transform this YAML and add an annotation that says please inject Linkerd into these pods, and so we've added that into our CLI. Linkerd inject dash. We'll just add a single line annotation to it, uh, which you can apply yourself or you can apply at the namespace level, and then we're just going to send that right back to the Cube API. So now we see new pods getting created. Instead of one container per pod, they all have two containers per pod. So now we've taken Emoji Voto. We installed it. It's a working app on its own. Uh, it's a working app on its own. And then add it to the mesh. Haven't made any custom resource definitions. Haven't linkerd ified it or anything like that. Um, I've, just, I've just got to add it in. Uh, a to Z Ice uh, is asking if there are performance impacts for adding Linkerd. Yes, definitely. And there's tons of things that you can do to manage or to measure it, including a really cool uh, service mesh benchmarking tool from the folks over at Kinvoke. Right. So we use that tool when we compare. Um, we use that tool when we compare uh, Linkerd versus another very popular mesh. Uh, out in the environment, so it's a it's a great testing harness, and we'd recommend you you check it out. Um, and then, if you have questions about the overall performance impacts of adding a mesh, it's really great to test it in your environment and see what happens. So this is kind of the end of the of the getting started guide, or about all I'm going to show you. Although you can see more and go through it in more depth if you go to the getting started guide itself. So now I'd love to. We've got that out of the way. Uh, Taylor, good time to, to get into policy and, and break some stuff? Always. Come on, let's, uh, right. let's, let's, let's see the bits fly. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to change my, my cube context to a live cluster. So this is a cluster running in Sivo Cloud. And if you haven't checked it out, uh, Sivo has a nice Kubernetes as a service offering you can check out. And it's really very inexpensive if you want to run your own cluster. Uh, and I personally use it all the time. So we're we're gonna do is we're gonna set up another watch here on the right. Okay, get pods dash n emoji photo because I'm gonna I'm gonna make life hard for emoji photo, and I want to see the pods in the namespace as we do this. So now once you do that getting started guide, right? You have Linkerd installed. You have an application in the mesh. So now I want to go back to I want to go back to this little diagram really quickly. Right, so the proxy is the tool that handles setting up the mutual authentication. It's what handles giving us data like, hey, you know, what's the success rate or uh, request volume or latency for the various components, right? I get all that because my traffic is passing through the proxy. So in order to do policy, we have to have a proxy on that on that node, right? On that that component. Right, that is going to receive the traffic. So in Linkerd 2.11, we introduce uh, we introduced server side policy. Right, what that means is in this conversation between front end and back end A, front end is the client, back end is the server. So as Linkerd 2.11, I can tell this proxy what to accept or not accept on behalf of back end A. Right, we do not have policy that says from front end where can you go or what can you do. Although that is coming in the Linkerd 2.12 release, um, and love to hear your thoughts on it. And again, join us in Linkerd Slack. Tell us what you'd like, and feel free to participate in the design discussions actually going on in the Linkerd Git repo around 2.12. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to show you server side policy. Okay, so a couple of important caveats, right? When you use policy. You have to opt in. You have to opt into it with Linkerd. So as of now, Emoji Voto is using zero custom resource definitions to do its job, 
right? But to to work with policy, I'm going to begin to start start using custom resources. So the the first thing I want to do is I I need to set the the default policy for either the cluster, the namespace, the deployment, or the pod, right? The workload or the pod, right? I'm going to set policy at the namespace level, right? And what I'm going to set is an annotation that says no matter what, if you don't have an explicit rule saying, um, if you don't have an explicit rule saying you may do X, Y, or Z, um, it's going to deny it. So let's let's do that. So I'm going to do K annotate NS emoji voto, and I'm going to add an annotation called config dot. And I should have copied and pasted this from linkerd.io slash. Default inbound policy equals deny, right? So I want it to deny traffic unless it's been explicitly authorized that it may, may do something. And the first thing you're going to note is nothing happened, right? And if we go to the Emojivoto app, right, which you can go to, it's just emojivoto.cvo.59s.io. You can refresh. You can vote on things. And everything still works. So, what's happened, right? Well, the the um, the the what happened here is I haven't restarted any of these pods. So that default policy annotation is only picked up on pod restart. So let's let's restart some pods. So before I do it, does anyone want to guess? I will if you guess correctly. Right, I will find you and I'll send you a Linkerd hat. Right? Does anyone want to guess what's going to happen to Emoji Voto when I restart the deployments in this namespace? And to be clear, this is the hat that I've got. It's cool. It doesn't work well with headset or on my head, but it's a hat. And if I have to, I'll send you my hat. Um, so before I do this, what does anyone have a guess as to what's going to happen? Taylor, you want to guess? Absolutely. I'm going to guess that we're going to see some connectivity fail. Ah, excellent. Great guess. All right. All right. We got a lot of a lot of it's going to crash. I'm hearing you. You're you're wrong, however. <laughs> Darn it. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's yeah, it's really unpleasant. Um it's a it's a total and the reason I'm pointing this out, right, is that um, is that policy is tricky. And policy is, for the first time in Linkerd, we have given you a tool that will allow you to thoroughly shoot yourself in the foot, right? So you've got stuff to harm your environment here. It's good, and there's power. You know, there's there's jelly in those donuts, but you know they're they're hard to get. So the problem is, you see my new version of the app, I'm getting restarts. Yeah, thank you, son of, son of single. Uh, the, the health checks don't work, right? Because the first thing that's happening, I can go look at, hold on, let me show you. Um, let me show you in the actual um, traffic analyzer thing that I have here, right? Uh, so now that, now that my things are hitting a new policy, um, or darn it, is this the right one? I don't know. It's not showing here, but... Uh, basically, there are health checks that occur on the admin port, and none of them are allowed, right? So I can't even restart my application. Um, so these these folks are going to eventually end up in crash loop back off, and they're not going to get anywhere. So let's fix the admin port. So let me do a quick a quick read on something. Yat is just an alias to a tool that that reads text uh, in a YAML aware fashion. Uh, so let's look at this manifests. Uh, emoji voto. So I got a policy here. It's like admin allow admin allow health. There we go. We're gonna allow some health checks through. Um, fun fact: if you do go in here and check out the Linkerd dashboard, <laughs> you're gonna see it looks really unhappy, right? Because it sees there are new things spinning up, but it's it's not it's not seeing any traffic for them, right? But it's still seeing requests because the old version of the app still works and things are flowing, right? Uh, so yet is an alias to the bat command, and bat's a, a CLI tool that does a better uh, reading of of uh, files, or better, a different different uh, version of cat 
and it does it in a language specific fashion. So sometimes it looks good. Um, so let's look at, at this policy. So what I'm going to do is I'm creating a custom object. So now we're getting our first custom resource definitions in Linkerd that you're going to have to use if you want policy. So first thing I create is a server. And a server is a tool very similar to a service that will match on some number of pods, right? And it gives it a name. So I need a pod and a port to match on, right? Um, so I'm going to match uh, on the uh, on any pod in the namespace. Um, <laughs> and I'm looking for the Linkerd admin port, right? And uh, and then I'm going to apply a server authorization policy, which is an allow rule on that on that on that uh, server, right? So I I decide on the server that I defined above. And then I'm just going to say, hey, listen, allow all unauthenticated connections to that uh, to that port, right? Because the Kubernetes, when it talks to my pods, it's not using the service mesh, so it's an unauthenticated connection. So we're going to go ahead and apply that. Okay, apply. Okay, apply the policy. Now, does anyone want to guess what's going to happen? Drum roll, please. I, I, I burned everyone earlier. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, what's going to happen is eventually these things are going to come out of crash loop back off, right? And then the actual health check will start applying. So policies apply, like server, server authorizations apply live as you make changes, right? I don't need to restart anything. Uh, oh, <laughs> thank you, Femi. I totally missed that. So it turns out nothing's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you, you got him again. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Um, so now, now I've got policies. Things are going to start running. <laughs> great, great catch. Uh, so these things are are going to. So no, I don't need to restart the sidecar. Uh, great question, uh, Sono Single. Um, I don't need to restart it. They will they will take effect automatically. You know, however, if they're in crash loop back off. Like that's the that's the Kubernetes API saying, you know, hold up for a minute. This <laughs> there's something there's something bad wrong here, right? Um, yeah, great. Um, okay, so we'll see the old pods going away and the new pods coming up. Now we have broken emoji photo, right? So even though the pods are working, it's busted. Uh oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> We have all kinds of problems, including the problem that my uh, my ingress, which is talking to emoji photo, is no longer allowed. Right? No one's allowed to do anything here. Right? Uh, and I can look at Linkerd, and I can see, oh, look at this! My requests per second have dropped precipitously because the only requests that are getting through are those Linkerd health checks. That's that's all. Or sorry, the Kubernetes health checks. Nothing else is nothing else is passing, including. The calls from Prometheus that scrape data about uh, about what's going on in the environment, right? So we're gonna the next thing we're gonna fix is Prometheus talks to our pods and gets some data from the from the Linkerd sidecar, and we're gonna allow that. So let's do that with allow prom. So this is very similar to the to the file you saw before. I have a server which is the is the Prometheus query. Uh, the Prometheus port on the proxies. And then I have a server authorization, which allows that to come from the Prometheus uh, application. So with this policy, it's not really exciting to show anything. We can just start getting getting more data about the fact that nothing is talking to anything because, because we don't have any app traffic, right? Um, but we're now in a place where we can actually fix the app traffic. So let's do that. Um... So let me do one more. Yet policy manifests OG policy or something. There we go. Let's take a look at this. Uh, and thankfully, the folks on the team who do useful things instead of just talk to folks have done a lot of a lot of time, uh, spent a lot of time giving good annotations about what's going on in this environment. But essentially, we're setting we're setting a server that looks for the apps in the emoji service and authorizes the gRPC protocol uh, 
from, or it, it's just, it just selects it, right? And now we have an authorization that says who may talk to it, right? Oh, sorry, I have another server. These are my two gRPC ones, uh, internal gRPC. So it's a bunch of things. Oh, right, so here's my authorization that says, you know, you may talk to gRPC on either of these servers. So if you look at both of our servers, they have a label that says they're internal gRPC. So with these two servers, I create a server policy that selects them and says, you may now have some traffic, right? On top of that, I allow, um, I create a server for the web front end, right? And I allow all traffic to the web server, right? From anywhere. Uh, so let's let's do this, and God willing, uh, I'm gonna have something that works. So this is the fingers crossed moment, folks. Uh, emoji voto policy, great. Uh, we've created some things. Let's take a look at what happened. So refresh our dashboard. This isn't promising. Uh, did I add the prom stuff? Sorry, did I apply the prom manifest? I did. Okay, so I allowed prom. I allowed this. Uh oh. No, again, didn't restart our pod since we added policy. And yeah, there we go. <laughs> we have yeah, traffic. Yeah. Phew. I was sweating there for a second. And let's go to emoji vote. See if we can we can get to it. What's this emoji vote working with uh with traffic, with policy? Right. Uh, we can view our leaderboard. Okay, great. Uh, we can vote on our favorites. And that's that's the story of policy in uh, in Linkerd. So it's dangerous, uh, but it can it can get a lot of value. And once it works, it just works, right? Um, and then if you want to use if you want to use uh, the folks that make Linkerd, that's the company Buoyant, who I work for. We make a product that allows you to get a little bit more information about your Linkerd environment and turn it into a bit more of a managed service. If you go to Buoyant Cloud, you can add your, your cluster up to two clusters for free uh, and just check it out. See how it works with policy. You'll be able to see policy violations in progress and some other, other neat stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's, the, that's really the, the heart of the story. I didn't mean to go through it quite so quickly. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. Does anyone does anyone have any questions or anything I can dive into? I know, sorry, I know A to Z asked about performance impacts. Uh, thing I tell you is adding a proxy, it adds a computational tax, right? Because that proxy is running beside your, your application. So it, it takes compute to run, right? And it also adds a hop in that transaction from one application to another. So it it by default must add some amount of latency. Now, the question is, what does it do for you overall, right? And as an example, we have some folks, um, Entain, yeah. So these, these folks at Entain published the case study with the CNCF where they talked about how adding a service mesh allowed them to not only get better performance out of their application than they were able to see before, but allowed them to, to realize a 10x increase in throughput. Right, so not only did they get faster by adding a service mesh, they also were able to scale higher than they were able to previously, and all sorts of other gains. And you can check this out. I'll send the link to the um, the CNCF folks, and they can post it in the chat. But they were able to see uh, they were able to see huge uh, huge benefits. Right in the end, there's plenty of stuff about performance. Sono single. They'll, they'll, oh, thank you so much, CNCF folks. Um, Oh, great question, A to Z Ice. So uh, they ask, uh, is it possible to write authorization for specific users rather than pods? No, right? That is absolutely not in Linkerd 2.11, right? This is entirely server side and it is, it is fairly coarse grained, right? Um, it is fairly, is fairly coarse grained where, um, you know, I am saying what Kubernetes objects, what Kubernetes specifically, what Kubernetes service accounts will a given server support, right? 
Linkerd 2.12 will allow you to make that more fine-grained where you can say what server is allowed to hit what path on what server, but it, it has no particular support for is this user allowed to do X, Y, or Z? Um, yeah, that's the that's the big story there. Did that answer your question, A to Z Ice? I hope so. How about traffic egress? Yeah, great question. Stay tuned for that on uh, Linkerd 2.12. And I'll let me actually show you the roadmap doc, which just got updated. So GitHub, Linkerd. Uh, Linkerd 2. So one, this is the place to go if you if you are curious about what Linkerd is doing, or you like Linkerd and you want to give it a GitHub star. It's always nice to have, or you want to uh, or you want to get involved in the project. Check this out. It's also where we have our roadmap, which we're gonna find right here. If you're trying to know more about what's planned in Linkerd, come check this out. Ask questions. Raise issues if you're looking for a specific bit of functionality. And yeah, we'd, we'd appreciate that. But sorry, Sona Singal, I, I blew past your question. Stay tuned for Linkerd 2.12 for what we do vis-a-vis -vis ingress, the or egress. Uh, but all, all things like this uh, are, all things like egress are the provenance of client-side policy. So let me, let me go to this diagram real quick. Right now, the decision happens here as to whether or not to accept the request. Client-side policy will shift that. The, de the decision occurs here as to whether or how to make a request, right? So egress is essentially, should I go from in-cluster to something off-cluster, right? Third service, you know, um, whatever out here. And that would be an egress decision. So I can't, I can't tell you exactly what's going on because I don't know and things are still in development, but Linkerd 2.12 is the release that will support things like egress or allow you to build things like egress. And I hope that was useful. Uh, Anternor asks if they're good first issues and they absolutely have issues that are marked good first issues. Um, so would love, would love to see involved. If you're thinking about contributing and, and you don't know where to start or what to do, come join us on Slack. Right, that's where that's where you can talk to folks like the maintainers. There's a contributors channel for folks that have contributed to Linkerd, right, and are are looking to go further down that road. Uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, we released an article today. Oh, not this one. Sorry, released an article today where uh, one of our engineers talks through everything step by step you would need to lock down traffic inside of a namespace. So you can go a little bit a little bit further with it if you like, and I'll. Let me share this. So you can learn about namespace jail and how to make that how to make that happen. Um, and yeah, it, it'll talk a lot more in depth about uh, the service authorization, the server or sorry, server authorization, servers, and policies. Oh right, and our docs. Sorry, one more. If you're looking at this and you're like, geez, I wish. Someone could explain this, but like way more slowly. Uh, go into our docs, you'll see authorization policy, right? Which talks about everything that we we showed you today, right? And has a link to uh, some more in-depth stuff in the policy reference. So these should pop up in the chat in a second. It's not super fun to read on stream, but essentially you've got You've got a couple of different options, right? On your cluster, on a namespace, you say, do I want to allow things that are unauthenticated? Only authenticated things, which if you do that, remember, your pods won't start if they have health checks unless you add an authorization policy that lets that admin port come through. In cluster authenticated or in cluster unauthenticated. And that is, if it if the traffic originates in your cluster, fine. If it doesn't, sorry, we're tossing it. Uh, or deny, which is what I would generally use. Just deny all traffic all the time and only allow what you want to do, right? Because the best way to do something like policy is be explicit about what you allow. Don't worry about individual denials because it's way it's way harder, right? It's less secure. And uh, well, I guess it's just those two. It's harder and worse. So <laughs> don't, don't do it. Um, 
yeah, so those are those are the docs. Uh, I guess really I'm I'm waiting on questions from folks at this point. In, one one question I have for you, Jason is I I know that Linkerd is kind of in the business of routing things around, right? So my guess is that I I've, I've used Linkerd a little bit, but not enough to know kind of if that stores state of each request or kind of like how to go about debugging or building policy. So do you know if there's anything upcoming like uh, a tool that would help like Let's say I'm I'm uh, uh, taking an application and trying to add service mesh to it and want to go about it solely. I'm not able to start with deny. Do um, you know if there's anything coming where I could actually uh, take a look at a potential policy and see like, okay, this is going to block 16 of 100 requests that it gets, or kind of like any iterative approach to adding on uh, policy on that front, or uh, do you have any recommendations on uh, some good things to be noteful of, mindful of as you write that policy? Yeah, so tons of stuff. One, uh, if you're if you're gonna start doing policy, like at least consider setting up Buoyant Cloud. Like it's been like we're we're actively building features to make policy a lot more simple and straightforward. In general, right? Like one of the nice things about Linkerd, uh, and now that we've got traffic again, we can see our map. Is it gives you a lot of tools to debug your application, right? Like so, I've got Emoji Voto, and even though it's working now, it's actually secretly broken, right? Uh, and we can see that because when we go look at the namespace, or if we look at all our namespaces, we see that the success rate of Emoji Voto is down here at 95%. And there's no reason that we should be seeing failures. So we can go in, we can look at our deployments, our individual deployments, and see their success rate, dive into an individual deployment, see who it's talking to and who's talking to it, right? And then go snoop in on live calls between these components, right? So That's if I want to cool. know, what do I need to authorize on what port? Well, just go into Linkerd dashboard. I know that it takes call or it makes calls to emoji, right? And what, but pass. And I, it takes calls from VoteBot and it takes calls from the ambassador service. And again, or the ambassador uh, edge stack, uh, their ingress. So it, those are the components that talk to it, right? And if you go slam this URL a little bit, you'll see that pop up live. Um, yeah, so you've got you've got some insight there. So there's there's all the tooling that you need to track it. And then we also had a webinar that we just did yesterday, which is recorded, which talks about running Linkerd in production and how do we how do we debug things? And I'm grabbing the link right now, uh, and I will I will send that into the chat. Uh, sorry, I have to ask someone. Because I didn't think to, I didn't think to get that available in advance. So a couple different pathways. One thing to note, folks, if you if you're looking at this and you're like, "Gee, I love, love this data, but I hate uh, I hate um, web interfaces. I hate using a GUI, right? Because I used to hate GUIs all the time. Uh, you can also get all this data. Uh, you can also get all this data. Um, uh, you can also get all this data on the terminal. And Catherine tried to send it, but she's unable to. So I'm trying to grab the link here. Um, there we go. Got it. Uh, folks, if y'all don't mind posting it. So this is just a webinar that dives deep into <laughs> dives deep into debugging, right? And how you would how you would do some of this live. Um, you know, but again, if you are using Point Cloud, it's really easy to see when you have a policy violation error, right? And you'll get alerted to that fact. Um, uh that's a all right so i'm sorry uh a to z asked is there any way in linkerd to analyze traffic which is not part of the kates cluster but access within the pods you're gonna have to you're gonna have to clarify that because i don't quite understand and i'm sorry for that uh okay so oh thank you cloud Native foundation for posting that that link in the chat. So that's a recording of our production webinar. And there's a whole webinar series if you're interested in learning more about, about service mesh in general and Linkerd in particular, because obviously that's what we so we talk about with, with the Linkerd folks. Um, yeah, it's a great place to dive in. Anyway, we can just because we've got a few, let's go, let's go see what's wrong with with emoji photo. How's that sound? Yeah, that sounds fantastic. All right. What the heck? So I've got my success rate. I've got the posts. I can also, again, filter on on pass on these individual calls and see what the success rate is. Well, looks at looks like when web calls to to the voting deployment, 
makes a post to this path, it has a 0% success rate. So it's tried to do it 34 times since we've been watching and it never works, right? We can go look at voting, you know? If if you're wondering how I do this so fast, like I've debugged this app like 500 times at this point. So. <laughs> <laughs> Still haven't fixed it though. So what does that say? Um, so we can go look at we can go look at voting. It sees all calls coming from web, uh, and again, it sees nothing succeed when we call the vote donut. We can we can get a little further. We could tap the traffic, right? So more specifically, I'm just going to change this path here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for in the emoji voter namespace from web, right? I'm going to check anything that hits the voting service on voting and see what what live calls I can capture, right? So this is just Linkerd tap. Uh, so we got a couple calls coming through, so let's stop it here. Um, this is kind of neat. So you'll notice that, that, um, the calls to vote donut are failing, right? Yet the HTTP status code is 200, right? That's because web is talking to voting as a gRPC call, right? So the connection works from an HTTP perspective, but gRPC is throwing up an error code. So this isn't an unknown status. It is an error called unknown. This is unfortunate nomenclature, but that's what it is. So we're <laughs> seeing a gRPC error of unknown pop up from this uh, from this service when we call this path, right? So I've got I've got more than enough information to say, hey, person that makes uh, the voting service, I can't vote on the darn donut. I can go confirm it, and y'all can do it as well, and hit this uh, hit our very misleading error because it's not a four hundred four. It's just actually a generic failure. But you can try and vote for donut, and in spite of it being, you know, the best, the best uh, emoji option, it is sadly underrepresented in the voting. So um, we've got a problem, and we can fix it, and we know essentially where to go to fix it. If we if we go explore the uh, emoji vote voting service, we're gonna find the problem pretty quickly. Yeah, <laughs> donut gate indeed. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's a little bit of a little bit of debugging. You know, again, when it's a policy problem, you're just gonna not see you're gonna see traffic drop precipitously for that service because no one's gonna be allowed to talk to it, right? Um, and that's gonna be at the heart of it. And that that debugging and production section session will give you a lot of tools that you need to to dive a bit deeper. And there's lots of material. If you like Linkerd, one, try it. I think you will like it, right? It's extraordinarily easy to use. It doesn't require you to transform your app and it gives you a ton of benefits right at the gate. Uh, but if you do like it and you're looking to go to production, there's a lot of tooling out there to help you, including a buoyant production runbook. Hold on, I, I know I've got that one. So where we talk about, um, we talk about what you need to do or what you need to think of before you take Linkerd to production. Right, including things like answer the question of do I really want to run an in-memory Prometheus and Grafana, or do I want to externalize that and and how am I going to handle that? Right, or what am I going to do about things like my Prometheus data, um, and some other some other interesting tidbits. So I'd I'd recommend that highly. And that's oh, thank you for already sharing that. Y'all are great. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the bulk of it, right? You can see our policy is taking effect now. So if you want to see it in in Buoyant Cloud, right? Now I get, you know, the TLS status by port, right? So are we using MTLS? Are we using uh, plain text? Are we using application TLS? What identity is involved and what policy is taking effect, right? So that we can see why it's working at any given time. I really don't want to hammer on that though. Um, yeah, if you have questions, I've got I've got whiteboard, I've got time, and we've got a an environment to break if y'all like. Are there? Uh, I, I I really do like how uh, you know straightforward that Linkerd is to both get installed and tr to kind of you know turn all of the knobs, so to speak, within some of the configuration. Um, are there add-ons, or is is it really just kind of a service mesh, and then it's you can kind of uh, batteries not included, you can bring in other things at a later point in time or, or kind of what does that look like? Yeah, great, great question. So check if you, if you get the chance, check out this, this dashboard link, right? So I'll send it, I'll send it again. 
um, check out the dashboard. Like what you're going to see here is a bunch of things going on, right? So I've got Flux. So if you're if you know GitOps, uh, Flux is a tool in the GitOps space. So I'm using Flux to install this. I'm using the Ambassador Edge, spa, edge Stack to route traffic to it. You know, I I can do telepresence uh, or a number of other great toolings. And the nice thing is, Linkerd is a well-behaved CNCF project. You know, we hit graduated status back in July, which means we hit the the highest tier of maturity for it for a open source project like on par with Kubernetes, Prometheus, all sorts of other things. But we behave in a way that allows us to natively integrate, right? So I did a, a demo for the folks at Ambassador on how do you integrate with Telepresence. Well. I install Telepresence, I add it to the mesh, and everything just works. Because the integration point is at that native Kubernetes service object, right? We don't expect you to do something special to talk to to talk to apps, right? Um, you know, same thing with Ambassador, right? Like the integration with Ambassador just works. I add Ambassador to the mesh, my traffic rats around. You know, I'm using, if you see, I've got, you know, I've got TLS on, on all the, um, all the websites that you're you're visiting. Uh, and that's because the Ambassador Edge Stack generated a certificate for me with Let's Encrypt, right? And again, I'm using their native objects and letting their flow happen. I've got Flagger in here. So I could do a progressive delivery uh, rollout against one of my applications. And I could do it at the service mesh level or I could do it at the ingress level, right? I, I have options because no one's, no one's constraining me to behave a certain way and, and we don't have expectations for the projects that we work with. We do one thing, which is the service mesh. We do it well. Linkerd is not an ingress. It is not an API gateway. It is just a service mesh, right? And that's that's what we do. Uh, Sono Singal uh, asked, is, is it a good idea to inject Linkerd into our ingress controllers? Yes, it is. It's harder, right? You need to, you need to pay attention and there's documentation on every ingress in the Linkerd docs page. Um, you know, I'll tell you that I know for sure emissary works great. Nginx has uh, a really easy way to do it. There's there's one thing you'll see when you read our docs, which is we talk about ingress mode versus regular mode. As of 2.11, we are hoping to move away from ingress mode. So we want you using an ingress in its native mode and not try and not try and have Linkerd do anything special, but please check the documentations for your specific ingress. Uh, that would be my my recommendation. Um, yeah. Any other, any other questions? Awesome. None that I can think up. Uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to throw them into chat. Otherwise we can, uh, can get things closed out. Thank you so much, Jason. This has been kind of fun to find out all about this and really to dig in and see, you know, what was going on with that uh, donut vote too. That's uh, good to know. And uh, I'll keep that in the back of my mind as I spin this up for demos myself. <laughs> it's a, it's a great, it's a great broken application that you can use. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, if you go speaking of telepresence, if you go check out the, the telepresence folks getting started guide, they'll show you how to fix it. So you can actually learn how to resolve the problem if you like using telepresence. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's all, that's all I've got. Uh, long story short, add the proxy and get all the value of being in the mesh. Thank you, awesome. Sona Single. Well, hopefully those ideas mesh for everyone. <laughs> um, <laughs> Perfect. Uh, wonderful. Well, with that, I guess we can close out. Thank you so much, Jason. Uh, thank you everyone for joining the latest episode of Cloud Native Live. It was great to hear from Jason today about Linkerd 2.11 uh, and all of the new policy features as well, as well as the, the broken application donut gate and uh, what's upcoming for 2.12 as well. Uh, really enjoyed all of your interaction as well and all of your questions today. Uh, next week, we will be off due to the winter holidays, and we'll be kicking off again in the new year. So thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you soon. Uh, Jason, do you have any uh, parting wisdom to share with anyone or, or any closing remarks? Uh, no, I don't. I'd, I'd love to see you in the Linkerd Slack. Please feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to make you successful with Linkerd, and I'd love to help you on your journey to production with Linkerd. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Jason. Uh, the only thing I have for y'all is uh, let's keep production boring. Uh, let's let's figure things out. Uh, wishing Absolutely. you all a 
<laughs> wishing you all a wonderful rest of your days, weeks, and uh, and months as well. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see you later. See ya.